Love it or hate it, artificial intelligence is well and truly here. And as a photographer, a retoucher or an artist, we are in incredibly exciting times. Now, over the last few months, artificial intelligence seems to have really picked up pace with the popularity of image generators such as DALI and Midjourney, to name just two. The ability of AI to create completely unique images from simple language and text prompts in a very user-friendly way is nothing short of mind-blowing and producing some incredible results. Now I've only just started playing with this stuff, but I do have friends like Unmesh Dinder from Piximperfect that have been experimenting with it for a while now and doing some incredible stuff. If you don't already have it, I've added a link to his YouTube channel in the description. But it was actually one of his recent videos and an email from one of my uncles that pushed me to take a look. So my uncle Andy sent me this 70-ish year old photograph of himself and his two sisters, one my auntie and one my mom, asking if there was any way I could maybe clean it up a little bit by removing the scratches. Well, I was able to do way more than that. But when I say I, I mean artificial intelligence. So here's how I used it to take this original family photograph and turn it into this. Now I'm using the beta version of Photoshop because this has a filter called Photo Restoration in the Neural Filter section. If you want to use that, then you can just download the latest beta version of Photoshop from the Creative Cloud app. So the first thing I did was use the Photo Restoration filter. So I'll go to Filter, Neural Filters, and then turn on the Photo Restoration filter. This uses Adobe's AI called Adobe Sensei, and it does a pretty good job without us doing anything. But it also gives us some controls to fine tune the results if we need to. Now in this example, there were a few things I still needed to do, but to be honest, they were really easy to fix using the clone stamp tool and the healing brush. So I'll just output this on a new layer back into Photoshop and do a quick fix on those areas. Now that's fixed, I'll just flatten the layers. There's also a colorize filter in the neural filter section, and that also uses AI, but to colorize black and white images. And without fiddling around with any of the settings, that too does a pretty good job. And you can also dive in and fine tune the results using the controls that are available. I'm not gonna colorize this one though, so let's just take it back into the main Photoshop workspace. Now with the family photograph, we can see that the crop is very tight, leaving no room on either side if I wanted to print this as maybe an 8x10. Now if I was to try to build more background on either side of the picture, that wouldn't be easy, and even if I did it, it would take quite a long time. But this is where AI completely blows my mind. First of all in Photoshop, I'll unlock the layer by clicking on the padlock icon. And then with the crop tool, I'm going to add more empty space to either side. I'll then save this out as a PNG to maintain the transparency in the areas I want the AI to build the background. I'll call this test and save it onto my desktop. The next thing I'll do is come to Dali and I'll log in by clicking in the top right hand corner. And then on the home page in the middle, I can click to upload my test image. I'll navigate to the desktop, there's the test.png file, and I'll click on Upload. Now when I do that, it straight away asks if I want to crop or skip cropping. So I'm going to click on Skip Cropping. I'll then click on the tick underneath to place the image, and then we can see this blue bounding box going around it. This is called a generation frame, and you can see here that it says 1024 by 1024. That's the pixel dimensions, the maximum pixel dimensions that Dali currently will actually generate an image in. Now I'm going to click and drag this so that the generation frame 
has the image or our original photograph right in the middle and we've got these bits either side and the actual bottom of the generation frame is touching the grass because we don't need to extend the grass any more than what it is. Then I'm going to come to the tools at the bottom and one of these tools is an eraser. Now I'm going to use this just to go down either side of the original photograph because you can just about see the original white border that would have been there when it was first printed. So I need to get rid of that. Now when I use the eraser over on the right hand side we have this slide here where we can change the size of it. So then once I've got it the right size I'll just click and drag down over the left hand side to remove that white border. I'll come all the way down to the bottom to there. I'll do the same on the right hand side because I can see just a little bit of that white border there and that white frame as well. That will come down to there and that's done. Now that the image is ready I'll come over to the top left hand corner of the screen where we have this input area. Now this is where I type in just using natural normal language to tell Dali what I would like it to fill those blank areas with. Now this might take a few attempts to get it just right but let's just start off by typing in garden and house with window. When I've typed that in, I'll come up to the right hand side and click on generate. So this is what we have first of all. Now, the first one, not really what we want. I like the right hand side here. We've got windows as well, which is great. We can click on this arrow here to cycle through. Actually, that's not bad. Cycle through some more examples. That's kind of weird. It's kind of, it's added somebody else in. That's kind of weird. But let's just go back to say that one. That's probably the best one out of the ones so far, but let's just click on cancel. We'll leave the same wording in and just try generate again to see what Dali can come up with. Okay, so now let's just click on those arrows to cycle through, see what it gives us. Well, that, that's not bad, but I'll tell you what, let's just try one more here. Let's come to where we've got the text to put in. All I'm going to leave in there is just garden then click on generate to see what Dali can come up with and there we go now the bit at the top here don't need to worry about we can always crop that out but look how it's built these bits on the side that's looking good let's just cycle through some of these that one looks really good that one's kind of good and that one's kind of good let's just go for let's just say that we're happy with this one here now once we are happy all I'm going to do is just click on accept at the bottom and then in the top right hand corner click to download that image now that we've downloaded it, let's dive over back into Photoshop. So now I'll go to File and Open. Navigate to my Downloads folder, click and click on Open. And there we go, there's our image. Let's now go to the Crop Tool, so I'll press C on the keyboard to get the Crop Tool. And in the top here, we'll put in 8 by 10. So now we can see we can give this a very comfortable 8 by 10 crop. Something like that is looking good. But what about the dimensions? How big is this image now? Let's have a quick look here. Let's go to image and image size. We can see this is only 992 pixels on the longest edge. Let's just click OK. Now then, let's use some other AI software to make this even bigger. And the software I'm going to use is called Gigapixel by Topaz Labs. So I will go to File, Automate, Topaz Gigapixel AI and this software is incredible absolutely incredible let's just go to zoom to fit now over on the right hand side here we've got how many times we can actually increase the size of this image I'm going to just leave it at six eggs which is 600% increase in the size you can see in the dimensions at the bottom here here's the original dimensions and here's what it now will be 5,952 pixels on the longest edge. But look at the image here. The quality is still as good as what it was before we even enlarged it. Let me just click on apply. That'll then send it back over into Photoshop. I'll double click on the hand tool so we can see it. And there we go. Look, it's just incredible. How it does that, I have no idea, but it is just outstanding. So yeah, I am very excited about all this AI technology that's now amongst us. And when you think about it, today is the worst it will ever be because every day it's just going to keep getting better and better and better. But even for this video, the AI doesn't stop there. You see, I've had to use AI on my voice because we're relocating and I've done loads of packing. And this room, apart from what you can see behind, is completely empty. The sound panels on the wall 
behind the camera and on the ceiling are no longer there. And there's very high ceilings, which means that ordinarily the sound in this room is very tinny and very echoey. But I ran my voice through Adobe Shasta, which I did in a previous video, to make it sound way, way better, as if I'd had those sound panels on the wall. So I just find all this stuff incredibly exciting. Definitely not a threat. I think this is something that we're definitely about to work with, and it's just going to complement what we do. I don't know, what do you think? Do you think this is a threat? Do you think this is something that we need to be wary of? Or you can embrace it? Because I honestly think that if you don't embrace this, you're going to lose the race. I really, really do. But hey, that's enough of that. I really hope this has been useful in any way. But uh, give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. As always, give us a subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll catch you in the next video, which will be from a different location. See you next time.